Welcome to God of Love. This is Will Sanchez. My special guest tonight is Mishka Back on My Feet Verton. Mishka has been the program director for Back on My Feet organization for the past 18 months. She is also the editor and publisher of my favorite newsletter, Hugs Times. Mishka, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Great. Let's start, Mishka, by introducing yourself to our audience. For example, where were you born? There's something about your educational background. Okay, so I was born in a very rural area of Minnesota, west central Minnesota, about 45 miles south of Fargo, North Dakota. So yes, very small. We had one stoplight in town. Um, we had we were 45 minutes south of Fargo, North Dakota, so very cold. Um, but it was a great place to grow up. I, though needless to say, needed to get out and to the big city. So um, for school, I went to the Twin Cities and uh, spent four years there going to the University of St. Thomas. And after that, I moved to San Francisco. So I just kept getting bigger. And finally, I made my way to New York. I drove across the country. I had never been here before to visit. From San Francisco? Mm -hmm. And. I didn't have any idea what to expect. I drove my car up the Upper East Side and I said, hmm, this looks like the New York I think of in my head. Stop the car, find an apartment, and that was it. I'd planned to come for a year um, just to, you know, do New York City. And that was a decade ago. Interesting, but before we hit New York City again, as a child, what did you do athletically? Um, athletically, I would say for the most part, I tried to join a lot of sports and then hide somewhere in the back or by the candy machine or in the bathroom with my friends. Um, I really enjoyed being social and I liked joining things. I still do. Um, but it was mostly for the social aspect of it. Uh, I had, I suffered from asthma really badly as a child. And so even running a block, um, resulted in me having to use my inhaler. And so I, you know, I did track and field as a kid, but I only did the jumping and I was a figure skater for many, many years. And where did you go to college again? You said you went to Twin Cities? Yeah, in St. Paul at the University of St. Thomas. And, and what was your major? I studied print journalism and peace and justice studies. Um, I was actually on the track team for half of a year um, on the indoor track team, I did the triple jump and the high jump. But, um, you know, when you get to a college level of athletics, you have to commit to it if you're going to be really good. And I was absolutely not going to commit to it. I was having too much fun. So um, I decided to, to drop out of track. And it was a great decision because I, there were lots of other things, lots okay. of other things to do, um, really involved in our volunteer programs and our um, Student Coalition for Social Justice, that sort of thing. Um, no more sports for me for quite a while. Then after college, you decided to? I moved to San Francisco. Okay. I joined an organization called the Jesuit Volunteer Corps, and um, it's basically a year-long volunteer program. So uh -huh. um, I really just wanted to go to San Francisco. Okay. <laughs> I'd also never been there. Um, and it was great. Uh, the year that I, the first year that I spent there um, as a volunteer, we were to live in voluntary poverty. So we had um, a house where I lived with a bunch of other people, um, did nonprofit work, and we got $80 a month to spend however we pleased in San Francisco. So we got creative. And I came to New York. I was a teacher for several years. Um, and then I went to school, went back to school to get my master's in social work. That was at Columbia. Oh, excellent. Um, and after I got my social work degree, I got my first social work job um, at an organization, a public defender's office called the Bronx Defenders. Mm -hmm. That's in the Bronx. And what I did there was I worked ma mainly advocating for clients in courtrooms, hoping to get them into sort of treatment programs, drug treatment programs, rehabilitation programs as an alternative to jail sentences. And one of my first weeks at the Bronx Defenders, I was taking one of my clients, a young kid from, from court down to Odyssey House, which is, um, it has a bunch of different residences in Manhattan and, and New York in general, where men or women or young people um, spend six to 12 months or 18 months uh, in, the, in a drug treatment program. Mm -hmm. 
And when I was there uh, at one of the facilities with my client, I noticed a, a newspaper clipping on the wall and it was about a, a marathon training team. It was one of the members of Odyssey House, someone who had come out of jail, gone to this treatment program and started running and found it really therapeutic. Mm -hmm. And so he's trained for the marathon. And after he ran the New York City Marathon, he thought, well, I can share this with others. So he started training other people. And at the time I saw this, I just, I wanted to get involved in some way. This sounded right up my alley. Social work, running. I had by this time gotten gotten more into running and run a, one marathon, I think. But what is it about social work that attracted you? Because I would imagine it was a multi-year program and Columbia being a tough school. So you have to really apply yourself. <laughs> well, uh, helping people and serving people has always been something that my family has, has been really important to my family. Um, when I was a kid, we, when lots, our, my classmates got lots of Christmas presents. Our Christmas presents were given to the unfortunate kids. And we were always doing, th doing volunteer work and uh, my parents really stressed giving back and thinking about others who are who are less fortunate. So it was it's always just kind of been in my blood. It's what my siblings do now. Um, and I love being around people. Mm -hmm. So um, after teaching for a few years, it seemed like a natural thing to to go into social work. OK, now you said you already done a marathon at the time you joined Odyssey House. Well, well tell us about that experience. Oh, I've been trying to forget it for 10 years. Really? I, I guess it must be that memorable. Yeah. You can't I mean, it. it was pretty tough. I'm always impressed when people talk about their first marathons and they can speak positively about it because, wow, I will definitely never forget it. I actually, when I got to New York that first year, I got an apartment on First Ave and the marathon, a couple of months after I moved here, came right by my apartment okay. and I have uncles who are big runners. My family is a very athletic and I've always been into to organize like sporting events. I love watching the Olympics. I love watching marathons. So I went out um, on First Avenue and saw the marathon go by, watched the whole thing. I think I bawled my eyes out through the entire thing. I was really, really moved. Um, and I thought, I've, I'm going to do this. I've got to do this. So I think probably the next day uh, I started looking up running clubs and I found the New York Harriers happened to be a team that was near nearby where I was at mm -hmm. the time on the Upper East Side and I showed up to my first group run uh, I tried to get into the New York City Marathon um, the following year through the lottery and as many people find out that's not easy not so in New York that's slim and none that's your chances right right so what I ended up doing um, was signing up for the Twin Cities Marathon I went into the first my first marathon not having really any idea what to expect, but I am pretty tough on myself, and I I'm kind of competitive with myself at least, and uh, I wanted to to run a 4:15, and I only got a couple of blocks when I realized I had forgotten to stretch. I'd been too nervous, but I could start to feel it, so I stopped, and I'd been running with a 4:15 pace group. You know they have the balloons, uh -huh. so I stopped to stretch out, and when I just for a couple seconds. And when I was done, I raced ahead to get back with the group. But then I realized maybe at mile 10 that I had run up to, to the four hour pace group. Uh -huh. So I thought, uh oh, I'm a little out of my comfort zone. But I stuck with it, definitely hit a wall. My sister jumped in with me for a while. She said that I was hallucinating. At one point I said, oh, thank goodness, this is a downhill. And I sped up a little bit and she was like, I didn't want to tell you it was an uphill. You know, I struggled through the last five miles and I finished in four hours and one second, which I only later learned was a big deal. People, I would they'd say, how was your marathon? And I was like, oh, I four did four hours. hours. And they were like, oh, darn. I was like, what? I thought that was pretty good. And I didn't good. realize that breaking four hours is, is a big deal. But They call it a sub four. Yeah, well. Well, that's excellent. I was just happy one. that it was over and it took me about five years to ever think about doing it again. again. Oh, really? So it wasn't like, oh, I could do better. Just... Nope, I was like, <clears throat> done. So what, what do you think now that you have more experience helping out a first timer that's listening in, what do you think with the first couple of things that you would have fixed knowing now what you know then? I don't know that I would. I think that the marathon is hard. It's hard. And I think you, everyone's personality is different and you come out of it, you know, having just come through an experience this year, training six guys and going through their whole first marathon experience with them. 
the next day, the day after the marathon, they had a complete range of emotions. Right, and right. I don't know that any of it had to do with how well they trained. Right, right, it's just, right. you know, right, their own right. personality. Okay. So let's uh, jump back. <laughs> so you did uh, your first New York City Marathon. Mm -hmm. I mean, your Twin Cities Marathon. Twin what happened then? I just continued to run half marathons. Those those I love. Much more manageable. With New York carriers. Yeah. So I just kept training for half marathons. I love doing relays and other sorts of runs, mud runs. And so I really kept up with the running and, yeah. and tried to improve. But I had no interest in running a marathon yeah. again. Um, and then when I found out about the Odyssey House program, and I started running with them. The coach started encouraging me. He said, you know, we, we train these guys to run the marathon. It would be great to have, um, to have you run as a pacer with yeah. them. And at the time, I had had an injury that was play, had plagued me for a couple of years. And I really didn't think I could do it. And I doubted myself. And I felt like, oh, I don't want to, you know, pace someone else and have them dependent on me when I don't know if I can make it. But I'd gotten really close to a couple of the members. And ended up uh, running the second half of the marathon with him, just kind of jumping in. I had a pacer bib. And 13 miles even at that point was longer than I had gone in a really a, a good amount of time. And it was just the most amazing experience. He was so excited. I was so excited. We had so much fun. I think I gained five pounds because we stopped and ate everything on the course. We danced, we sang, you know, in the last couple of miles for him, it got hard and it was amazing to be there um, to help him through that. And, you know, when, when we crossed the finish line, it certainly felt a lot different than when I've crossed finish lines of marathons, but I also realized that my injury, my foot, hadn't hurt at all. And this had been the first time I'd run more than five miles without pain. Interesting. And I thought, oh, that's really interesting. It was almost as if because I wasn't focused on myself, I was focused on someone else. Yeah. I didn't have this pain. And I decided later that week to see if I could just continue running. Like maybe I can just keep doing this. And so I signed up for another marathon that in Miami, actually. And now you're with the warmer weather Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which was a mistake with the warm weather, but it kept me training through the winter and I ran the whole thing um, without pain. I've actually never had that injury come back, not even for a day. So oh, it was excellent. a really great lesson, I feel like, for me in excellent. what you can happen to you when you are running for someone else instead yeah. of running focused on yourself. Interesting. So you're sort of uh, headed towards the right path. <laughs> you know, yeah. And all these it's little, all little coming steps. Together. Okay. I think I read actually about back on my feet for the first time in a runner's world magazine. And at the time I was running with Odyssey house, I'd gone on to do another marathon, um, the New York city marathon with, um, a couple more members the following year and just was really finding, uh, I was having an amazing time teaching new runners to run, motivating them. That's really, I feel like what, um, I am best at, I can do best is, is motivating and my enthusiasm, especially for running and all that it's done for me. And just to be able to see people accomplish something that they had no idea that they'd be able to accomplish. So uh, when I found out that Back of My Feet was coming to New York City, I don't even think that they'd posted the job posting yet, but I just immediately wrote to Anne and said, you know, this is amazing. I really want to be part of this organization. It's blends running, which is I have such a passion for, and social work, which is what I'm trained in um, so perfectly. And I have been doing this program, and I just wanted anything. What is Back of My Feet? Um, so Back of My Feet is it's a nonprofit organization that uses running, um, introduces running to people experiencing homelessness, people um, who had long, been incarcerated long term, people who are in uh, drug treatment programs. Um, and it's really used as a way to help people change the way that they see themselves, change the way that they feel about themselves, and eventually to kind of make some changes, positive changes in their lives. Um, we're a national nonprofit, so we're in 11 different cities. All right, so what do you say we start warming up, get warmed up, and then get this run going?
sometimes the most obvious thing turns out to be the most brilliant. And clearly the brilliance is to connect the energizing aspect of running and put it to a broader underserved part of the population. get on the path to self-sufficiency and you move well beyond homelessness, you're going to have a big home in the New York City running community. I don't think there's a more compelling story than what Back on My Feet is doing and so we are so happy to partner with you, Dan, and to welcome you to New York. Thank you. One of the things I can guarantee you today is that you're going to leave here inspired. Back on my feet in New York City. How it's how it works is we have running teams. We have four different teams. They're based out of four different facilities around the city. We have three in Manhattan, one in Brooklyn. By facility, you mean a homeless a facility that yes. caters to homelessness? Well, the, um, in New York right now, we have we work with three drug treatment programs, long-term rehabilitation programs, um, and one transitional housing unit for facility for people who are coming out of long-term incarceration. Mm -hmm. So we recruit. Uh, members who are living at these facilities. They're called resident members, and we put them together with volunteers who are called non-resident members, and they run together three times a week, 5.30 in the morning, um, 5.30 to 6.30 every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, we have about 25 to 30 people on each team, and it's really, it's really incredible that at 5.30 in the morning on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, any, you know, all around the city, and, and any weather. In any weather, uh, we have 100 people out there running. What we see happening is when people um, start running, like so many people in their lives, you know, you turn to running and sometimes it's you turn to running as an escape. Sometimes you want to um, get more discipline. Sometimes you want to get more healthy. And, you know, it's universal. People not only feel better about themselves, but they're accomplishing these things they've never accomplished before. They're running a mile. They're running five miles. They're no longer smoking. They're talking to people that they never thought that they would talk to and feeling comfortable. They're, mm -hmm. you know, we did a run to the Rockefeller Center tree on Tuesday. And it was, we, we had members who'd never been to the tree before. And that was a really big deal. We started at Tavern on the Green, which is where we started at our first ever run for uh -huh. Back of My Feet, New York City. Oh, okay. And ran to the tree. and. You know, it's it's partly about the running, but it's also partly about the community, a big part about the community of people and just, you know, interacting with people that normally you think may not look at you on this when they're passing by you on the street. We're big on hugs and we're big on love and fun. And it's just it's such a positive thing for people in the morning. Both our resident members and non-resident members bring this up all the time. I mean, what better way to wake up than having a bunch of people greeting you and hugging you and being really excited to see right, you. Right, right. In fact, I think you start with a circle, the serenity prayer, mm -hmm. where you all hug and say the prayer together. One big together. group hug. Yeah, and the hugs, the hugs are awesome because some people are a little bit nervous about them at first. I was a little bit nervous about them at first. I was like, hugs, I don't know if that's my thing. But it's really amazing. I mean, it just really makes, turns you into a team really quickly. Right, right. You started the hugs time, so you must I did. Have, you I mean, have... I almost started, I, I can't decide if I was being kind of sarcastic or facetious in the beginning because we were so about hugs, but man, have I become a big hugger. So yeah, it's, it's just um, the things that the successes that I've been able to see have been amazing. And, you know, as program director, I'm responsible for making sure that our program is reaching, is, is having, uh, making a difference in people's lives, that we're really being successful in helping people um, move towards self-sufficiency. We are helping people move into housing. We're helping uh, members get connected to jobs, um, all based on the fact that they're they're extremely motivated, they're getting up in the morning, they're putting themselves out there, they're really making an effort, and they're learning all these, these new skills as well. Um, but the, 
the real stuff, the good stuff happens at the morning runs. It happens thanks to our volunteers. And um, that's where, you know, I really see the difference in people. And the volunteers are, are primarily runners. They're, they're all runners, right? They're not all runners. You'd be surprised. They're quite a few extremely awesome, dedicated uh, runners or volunteers who only started running because of Back on My Feet. So it's not just the running community, though there are certainly, I mean, we have members of Central Park Track Club. We have members of North Brooklyn Runners. We have ultra marathoners. We have people who've, you know, been in the Olympic trials, some incredible runners, but we also have quite a few folks who literally started running when they heard about Back on My Feet and thought, you know, I really want to get involved in this. I should do this too. Yeah, that's wonderful. I didn't know about that. Yeah. I, I know it's the running community that steps up and, and you have in other cities and it's the same thing. You, mm -hmm. so you repeat that process. I think originally started in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, Anne, yeah. And then, and then you just copy it in these Boston, different places. Boston, Atlanta, LA, Austin. Now, as a, a program director to you, stay in contact with the other program directors? Do you share success stories? Oh, yeah, stories yeah. We and... talk a lot. Yes, that's huge. Because we're such a small staff in New York, there are only four of us in the office, but there are only two of us program staff. So we definitely rely on, on the program staff in other cities to share, you know, not only tips and things that we're doing and things that are going well, but also to share stories and keep one another inspired. Excellent. Anything unique about New York that was different from the other places? Yeah, I mean, definitely. There are things that are different in terms of our population um, and the, the difficulties that they are facing. Um, I mean, of course, housing is an issue and housing costs. Um, you know, so many of my peers and people who are um, have advanced degrees and, you know, have been professionals struggle with making the rent. So imagine if you're making you know, minimum wage, trying to keep up with rent. So there's that difficulty, but there's also some, some, for example, uh, in different, in Atlanta or in Chicago, everybody drives to the runs. The volunteers drive to the runs in the morning because okay. everybody's in a car. And so here in New York, it's very different in that everyone either takes the train or they're running to the right, runs. Right, right. And so um, that's something that you know, we've had to kind of come up with creative solutions. For example, I'm often, I shouldn't say this uh, on the internet, um, but I'm often running across the Williamsburg Bridge at five in the morning, you know? And so we've had to get creative and have people meet up with one another so that they're not running in the dark alone. Uh -huh. and I'm also, really- Also a safety issue. Safety issue, yeah. yeah. But I'm, and I, I've really come to enjoy my 5 a.m. train rides because it's like a totally different side of New York that you don't see. And the volunteers and, and the staff will all joke about how when we're running in the morning or running to the train that we're the only ones on the morning side of the day. <laughs> like everybody else is like, have a good night, walking out of the bars. and. So it's definitely, um, it's fun to, to be up when the rest of, most of the city is sleeping. Excellent. Now you mentioned earlier that it sounds like you learned things about yourself doing this process. For example, you, you were with a big hugger and now you're yeah. a hug diva. <laughs> I've become um, definitely war more warm and fuzzy and probably more peppy. But um, I, you know, the members, especially because I'm, you know, the last couple of weeks I've been preparing to, to go, to leave, and I've had so many um, members come to me and say how much they've appreciated how tough I was on them. And that's something that, uh, being tough comes easily to me. Um, I definitely run a tight ship having been a former Catholic school teacher. Um, but I, I, it, it, would all, it always made me nervous that, oh, I'm being too hard on people or I'm not being accepting enough. And to have all these guys come and say, like, thank you for being so tough on us. Like, we, know, we knew that you loved us. We know that you love us and you're, you're behind us. But we really needed someone to keep us, you know, keep us focused and um, make, make sure. It, making them accountable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Interesting. Everybody needs that, even though they may not like it at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Oh, you're a Catholic teacher. Was that when you were in New York teaching in the Bronx or somewhere? Yeah, um, I taught in Harlem. In Harlem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, my boys goodness. junior high. 
boy, you're going to, I can't wait for your biography when you get to, when you get to <laughs> write it 20 years that. from now or whatever. You're moving back to Minneapolis, mm -hmm. Minnesota. What's, the, what's there that attracted you back? Zero degrees. I do like the cold weather. Oh, okay. I don't, uh, this morning made me question my judgment a little bit, but, uh, but besides the weather, I, my family is there. My parents are not far away and I have aunts and uncles there, but I love I also just love Minneapolis uh -huh. as a city. Um, New York has been fantastic, but I don't know if I'm tough enough for it anymore. I and, think you proved yeah. yourself. Maybe you're more of a Mary Tyler Moore show. You, like you might just make it after all. Oh, yes, yes. I do have that dream. Um, yeah, I just I think it's going to be a great city. It's actually a really big running city, uh, so I'm excited to get back in. We've in, got the in, Twin Cities Marathon, yep. and I think they have a few others, a couple They do, others. and there's Grandma's Marathon in Duluth, which is on my list. Oh, excellent. This is your camera. Take a look in there and uh, talk to your many fans that you're leaving behind in New York. Oh, Probably well. Probably breaking a few hearts, oh, too. <laughs> I doubt it, but let's see. Well, thank you so much, New York, and everyone here for letting me dress you up and run you around and do silly things and make you eat donuts and wear you out. You worn me out just a little bit too, but in a good way. Um, I'm going to take a rest in Minneapolis, but I'll be back a lot. So I hope to see you on the streets. But thank you so much, Michigan, for coming thank in. Thank you for having me. That was wonderful. Thanks. All the best luck. Thank you.